Now, six women, environmental and human rights defenders, are taking center stage at the Global Alliance for Green and Gender Action at the United Nations 2023 Water Conference that begins on March 23rd to share their stories of transformative community-led initiatives. These indigents or rather indigenous women and their communities are leading the way in gender just solutions to the climate and water crises using their ancestral knowledge and skills to conserve and protect water resources. They hail from rural villages and indigenous communities in Nigeria, Kenya, Mexico, Nepal and Paraguay whose uh, work inspire and inform global leaders on the urgent need to prioritize water security for all. Their projects fight against drought, pollution, and inequality brought by false climate solutions like hydropower dams or monoculture plantations for biofuels threatening their territories and well-being. To discuss this further, we are joined by Martha Agbab Agbabne. She's director of Lo Kiaka Community Development Center. Martha, thank you so much for uh, joining us here. Now, you thank and you indeed, you <laughs> and other women are going to represent Africa at the United Nations Water Conference. Now, tell us some of the transformative community-led initiatives that you have implemented to address the water crisis in your community. Oh, thank you so much for that. Um, we at Lokiaka Community Development Center, which is a gender an environmental rights organization based in Nigeria, where indigenous women and working through the indigenous lens, working at grassroots communities, trying to help indigenous women too. We decided to come up with the idea of cultivating mangroves. And this stemmed from the fact that we are indigenous people and we earn our living from the swamp forest which has been degraded due to high level of exploration by the extractive communities, talking about the, corpora the corporations, the oil and gas exploration in Nigeria, especially the Niger Delta area. So we have a lot of devastation, high level of pollution, high presence of petroleum hydrocarbon in our atmosphere, and that has actually decimated and degraded the environment. Right. Women no longer have their source of livelihoods. Our women, we normally pick crustaceans as means of survival. We pick the shellfishes. We also um, revive them, put them through to what people must eat because it's a necessary cuisine in our area. But because of oil exploration, this we are no longer there. So we came up with that idea to cultivate mangroves. The reason for that are just far-reaching. I see. One, what, what, are the, what other ancestral knowledge and skills are you using uh, to conserve and protect the water resources? All right. So um, we are into the uh, mangrove restoration in that area. And that is because of um, the potential that mangrove has against other rainforest trees and other trees we can find within the dry areas too. That mangrove could help to sequester carbon and that is the challenge we are having in our environment. We have this high presence of petroleum hydrocarbon that came out of unattended oil spills in our environment. Spills that came from activities of multinational corporations. So we are doing this by replanting mangroves and restoring right. lost forest, lost mangrove swamp forest. And with that, we are now also bringing in lost biodiversity into that environment. Indeed. So it's a very big thing we are doing here. What would you say are some of the challenges and obstacles that you face in your bid to conserve water? And generally, uh, you know, those that women environmentalists face. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, one great challenge we are facing is the continuous pollution of our environment by multinational corporations and also from the artisanal refiners. 
who now see the need to also mine and sell off oil and doing that adulterately and doing that unprofessionally. So that keeps uh, polluting the environment. Even when we are restoring, we still see oil spills in our environment. That is one key challenge we are having. And that challenge we are having is insecurity of our women and girls each time we are in the swamp forest working. Mm -hmm. There is this idea that environmental restoration is a government-led um, idea or initiative. And so when they see us working, there is this feeling, there is this understanding, imagination that it is actually coming from government. And that maybe we would have been funded by government to do what we are doing. Very More well. so because the UN Environment Program actually has it as one of its recommendations to clean and restore the Ogoni environment, where we are actually carrying out this mangrove restoration. Mm -hmm. That mangrove restoration. But we are far ahead of government. We are far ahead of United Nations, as it were, to restore the environment because we cannot wait for the decades they have kept to restore the environment, owing to the fact that we have low life expectancies and carbon is one of the major causes of death in our environment. So restoring that is restoring hope, bringing back life, and at the same time, restoring life Jesus. Very well. Martha, we'll leave it here for now. Thank you so much uh, for your company and all the best to you and your team. Martha Agbani there, she's a water conservationist.